this is where education and knowledge base being an engineer is important. Engineering is not just a word. Engineering is you are an engineer. You need to understand everything that goes into your craft to the most intimate possible knowledge you possibly can in order to maximize your effectiveness as an engineer. I'm here in Pro Tools. The very first place we're gonna go is we're gonna go to our setup tab and we're gonna click on IO. We have a tab right here that says inserts. We wanna go ahead and navigate to this insert tab. And then this is where we're gonna actually create the, the digital insert that's gonna be that hardware piece. So if you remember, we patched that hardware piece on output and input number six on the interface. That is a Lindell PEX500. So we're gonna go ahead and create that path right now. We'll call it PEX500. This is number two in the chain. So it's PEX500 number two. And then this right here, you'll see I have my interface, my universal Apollo. And on my Apollo, it's actually on channel 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and patch this, boom, on hardware insert 10. So that is what we have to do software wise in order to actually get that hardware piece in the software as an insert point. We're not done yet though. We still have to calculate the system delay. So the amount of time it's gonna take that computer to get the audio out and get the audio back in actually takes time. So in order for us to actually calculate that delay time, the amount of time it takes, here's what you gotta do. So I'm gonna start off by creating two mono audio channels. I'll call this first one Tone Gen. This next one we'll call Round Trip. So I'm gonna go ahead and take your attention some more really fast. We'll go back into our IO setup. We have hardware insert delay. Now every single one of these corresponds to the input and output of whatever interface you have hooked up. I make sure first that all of these are at zero before I start any of this testing. Otherwise, we're gonna be chasing our tails. So we've double checked, make sure that's at zero. Next thing I'm gonna do is pull up a tone generator on the tone gen track, go figure. We're gonna mute that so it doesn't bother us. And I'm going to select pink noise. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up really quick, do a level check. Sweet, a good steady level of pink noise coming out. And I'm gonna route the output of the tone generator channel to the input of the round trip channel. So that routing's already taken care of. And I'm gonna make a little selection here on my timeline. Right click this, and I'm gonna commit this. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna turn a little section of this into an audio. Re we have an audio sample here, a little clip of pink noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over into sample mode here. I'm gonna zoom in on this as far as I possibly humanly can. Boom. One, like as far as I can possibly zoom. I can't zoom any farther. I can't make any smaller selection in my DAW. That's one single sample. Now, quick tip, make sure you label this, give it a marker, otherwise it's gonna disappear in this grid. So I'm gonna call this the blip. I'm gonna take my blip and I'm gonna create a little audio region with it. That way I know right, right here where my blip is. It's marked on my markers, I can't lose it. So whenever I record arm this, and if I record something, it's just gonna send whatever's going here right back into this channel. I'll go ahead and hit record and show you what that looks like. So if you'll notice, it's perfectly lined up. There was no delay, no latency at all. So once you set up that little insert point here in IO, it'll show up just like a plugin. Go like I'm gonna add a plugin, I go down here to IO, and there's that PEX channel that we established. So I'm gonna pull this up now on my tone generator channel. All right, so watch what happens whenever I record this channel now that it has the, our hardware dropped on it. Watch what happens to this blip. Look at that. So I'll bypass this. This is without our hardware. Perfectly lined up with our hardware, we've got a delay. So how do we calculate this delay? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go straight to that blip. I'm just gonna create a little break right here. And then I'm gonna tab over to the transient. Boom, about right there is where the blip starts. I'm gonna create a break right there. I'm gonna highlight this region. And then in Pro Tools, make sure you are set to samples. And right here, it'll tell you exactly how many samples long that region is. This is the difference or the delta between the start and where it needs to be. So this is the this right here is the amount of time that we have to compensate in milliseconds. Pro Tools has given it to us in samples. Now, if I were to just try to switch this over here to minutes and seconds, look at that, it's 21 milliseconds. Only problem with that in Pro Tools is you have to get it down to the hundredth of a millisecond. So how do you do that? How do you calculate down to the hundredth of a millisecond when all you have is down to the single millisecond? There's one mathematical equation you need to know in order to calculate a sample read into a unit of time. So this is where education and knowledge base being an engineer is important. Engineering is not just a word. Engineering is you are an engineer. You need to know the science. You need to understand everything that goes into your craft to the most intimate possible knowledge you possibly can in order to maximize your effectiveness as an engineer. You are an engineer, don't be lazy, 
be an engineer, learn the math. So I'm gonna show you guys what this equation is. So right here, if you wanna convert samples to milliseconds, it is the number of samples divided by the sample rate times 1000. So my sample rate in this session right now, I'm working in 48K. If you ever need to check that, you literally just go to setup, click on session right here, I'm in 48K. It's 48,000 samples per second. So given our equation, we know that we are working at 48,000 samples per second. Because we're in 48K. So what's the difference between when the blip starts and where the blip is now? Well, that's why we made this little selection right here. You select this, you go to samples, and this right here, the length, this is how many samples that selection is. So it's 1,024 samples. So with that, we, had, we now have our second input data, 1,024. Now all we have to do is run this equation. I'll pull up a calculator here and we'll do it together. Check this out. So our number of samples, which is 1,024, divided by your sample rate, which is 48,000 cycles per second, 48K, times 1,000 to give us that decimal place down to the 100th of a degree, there we go, that's 21.3 repeating. We'll just go ahead and call that 21.33. Now with this information right here, we've just calculated our round trip delay in samples. We've converted it into milliseconds down to the 100th of a decimal point. So we'll go ahead and take our calculation right here. We're gonna go back into our IO tab where our hardware insert delay compensation tab is here. And I'm going to enter this. We're just gonna paste this number into every single tab. There we go. And we'll just paste this across all of our inserts because every single IO on your device is synced to a single clock. So if any single one of these things is giving you a problem after you calculate this on one, one input, you know that your clock is messed up or you have a channel that's just not reading your clock. So now that we've entered our calculated delay time into our hardware insert delay, watch what happens whenever I push record. So this is where it was originally. Haven't changed anything other than just entering those numbers. Let's hit record. Look at that. It went from being over here to being right here. So we're lined up. And if you wanna double check it, we can go ahead and bypass or disengage, completely disengage. So this is what it looks like without the hardware. We'll kick our hardware back in. Hit record and look at that. We're delayed. And that's it guys, we're fully delay compensated for hardware. So from here, you just, like I said, you just kind of paste that number across all your input channels in the hardware delay tab. And as long as you set up your hardware in this insert tab, it'll show up just like a plugin. So now I'm free if I want to, I can just drop this thing anywhere I want in a mix now, it's ready to go. So there I can, I can drop this anywhere and just start grabbing controls and using it anywhere I want to in a mix. Quick bit of information you need to understand. You can't just take these numbers and copy and paste them across every sample rate because sample rates are just that. It's the number of no, it's the number of samples captured over one second of time. So if I'm calculating a delay at 48,000 samples per second, well that delay trip is going to be very different than if I was calculating that delay for 192,000 samples per second. So make sure whenever you get this dialed in. So I've dialed this in right now for 48k. Make sure that you save or export these settings. You click this button right here and you title them. You'll notice right here, I've already done it. I've got insert latency at 41, insert latency at 92, 196. I've, I've got them all right there. So anytime now that I need this, I've already gone in and calculated all of this. So now anytime I need to change a sample rate, I just click import settings and there they are. All of my predetermined delays and round trip latencies for my, for my current setup, boom. It's already good to go. So if I'm if I'm working in 192, I click this button, I hit enter, boom. It's different for every single sample rate. So take the time, be a real engineer, learn the math that matters, earn that engineer badge, and wear it with pride. Thank you guys.